There's the uh, yellow light of death. There's it saying the PCS system needs rebooting. And this is the display. It is no longer charging the car battery when the car is moving. Hello everyone and welcome to Fuel. I'm Peter Davis and today I'm gonna to be changing the inverter on my version three Toyota Prius. So what seems to be the issue with the car? When we turn it on, we've got the triangle of death over in the corner there. And over here it says PCS system It is out of fault. So I checked what it was a couple of weeks back and it appears that it's a, a fault number 5310, which is a C1310. Problem with the hybrid vehicle system. Not good. I've been told by professionals that it's not the battery, but it should be the inverter that is currently going wrong. And today we're gonna to go to KKK Automotive and we're gonna be fitting a new inverter into this very vehicle. I do have to say that I'm quite lucky in the fact that I'm still able to drive the vehicle around and that is one of the reasons why the Prius Sifus believe that it is in fact the inverter and not the battery. If it's the battery or the battery fan that is not working then the car wouldn't be able to run on petrol alone and currently it's just working like a petrol car and it's not really giving me any fuel saving at all. When you press the display button, generally you come up with some information that'll show the car charging the hybrid battery. But right now, it, it doesn't happen. It's just uh, a screen saying that uh, basically your car's not working properly and the PCS sensor needs to be checked. Other things that you'll notice is that when you put your foot down, the engine slips, which is the car not charging the battery. And if you put the car into braking mode, so if you hit the brake system here, then the car does not charge the battery either. And that's all a sign that the inverter is potentially not working. So we do have an inverter unit that I managed to salvage from my friend at a reasonably good price. And we're gonna try and fit that on the car today and see if that remedies the issues that we're having. So, this is my inverter. It's a little bit damaged, we think. This is the new inverter the cycle has in his hands and we're gonna put this into here. This is the hybrid battery and here, we're gonna pull this out. And this is the fuse for the hybrid system. Now there's one more battery we need to get rid of and that is over here. This is the battery for the car. So we're gonna disconnect this and then we will be safe to work on our inverter. Now we're taking the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however many volts of this cover that's necessary off. So now we're opening all of the tops, one, two bolts there, two here, two here. Removing the bracket, bracket bolt here, so the bracket can come away. Now we're removing the bolts that have all of the sockets from the car plugged into it. Then we're gonna be loosening up all the cables on the outside it's all loose here and we're going to be pulling them out. Getting the hard to get bolts for one of the brackets on the back of the inverter. So here, just pull out one plug. Okay, pulling out the other plug. And pulling out the third plug. Now, from the side, there's one more. This is the main power. Okay, so this is one of the brackets on the right hand side of the inverter. So you have to undo this screw. Some more down at the front, there's one there. Okay, yep. This is the third shafty mounting bolt. And that's just on top. 
Now, do you want to give it a shake? Does it move? There you go, and our inverter is loose. The last thing now is the coolant lines at the side. So there's one over here and there is one hiding down there. You can see the green color. Okay, you ready? Oh, there you go, all the coolants coming out. We don't want to get any of the coolant into the actual inverter that's not for the coolant lines. Okay, there you go, it's popped up. And then it's time for the car to leak some coolant all over the floor. This is going to be the big one. This is what's going to cost me another litre worth of coolant. <laughs> there you go, good. And we're leaking everywhere. Nice. Open. Open. Now, just going to see if we can pull the whole thing up. Looks free. Nice. One more clip with wires. Okay. Just in the back. This is the hardest bit so far. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like it's free. There is our kind of newer inverter, but it's not working. And this is our older inverter that's going in. Okay. going to sand down all the connections so it's a bit better. It's looking very good so far. Seifel's doing a great job cleaning it up and he was super fast to get it out. There's the inverter. It's all clean. Look at look at how clean it is. It's nice. Thanks Seifel. Now put it in the car. <laughs> get it in the car now. Put it in. We need the whole village to help because it's so fiddly. If you take out the air filter, it's actually easy to get to this, but we didn't, so now we're paying the price. So, the water pipe is back on. Also, one mounting bolt is back on. Now putting on the mounting bracket to the chassis. Now it's time for the electronic. The main power plug from the back of the car. Nice. Now I don't know if the car's going to work, if it doesn't we've just wasted a lot of time, a lot of Cypher's time, and then Cypher's going to cry, I'm probably going to cry too, but yeah, let's see. So just put this back, and that battery's on, and the car is lighting up like a Christmas tree. Still saying PCS, so still the same problem. Oi. Oh no. Now we turn the car on, and we put coolant in there but it's coming up with lots of errors so Jimmy's checking out the computer now what is going on with the car okay so that's it for today the car's running with hybrid systems the new inverter is in there are some issues with the PCS system uh, pre-collision uh, system but the car runs now with the hybrid systems on so it charges the battery from what I can tell for now great job I eventually took my car to actual Toyota in Shiraz to get it fixed and the problem happened to be the hybrid battery fan mine was constantly running and it didn't turn off when it was uh, supposed to be off it cost a total of 570 ringgit to get it put in so it's about 430 for the fan and 140 to get all the fault codes removed and now we no longer have any Christmas tree lights on the dashboard at the end of the day if you have a C1303 or C1301 then it's probably going to be this inverter fan all right guys until next time get fueled I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. And be sure to check out some of the other videos we've got over here. Maybe that one.
next one. Remember, get fueled. <laughs>